This man's name is Armin Walsh. Armin is the Indiana Jones of Tyrolean archaeologists. <laughs> he loves to dig up castles and turn them into museums. And he's from the Tyrol. Now when he wants money, and it's expensive to renovate all these castles, he doesn't go to Vienna, his national capital. He goes to the capital of Europe, Brussels. And he doesn't go up there and say, I got something really cool for Austria because he'll go home empty handed because Brussels is not going to give you anything for Austrian castles because that's a false border, ignoring ethnicities. Brussels is really into ethnic regions. So Armin goes to Brussels and smartly says, I'm doing something for the Tyrol. That's an ethnic region that includes uh, Austria and Italy. We all think Tyrolia, Austria, yodeling and all that stuff, but the town of Tyrol, for which it's named, is actually in Italy, you see. And he gets his money from Brussels and he renovates this in the name of Tyrolean culture. I mentioned uh, the, the poor states, Ireland, Greece, Portugal. When I first started traveling, I distinctly remember no freeways in any of these countries. Autobahns everywhere in Germany, no freeways in those countries. Today, all those countries are laced by beautiful freeways this happens to be in Ireland, and with every new freeway, you see a European flag. And in this case, it says, this project has received 85% funding from the European Union. That means this is paid for by Germany and France. Now, get busy and work hard, because we're gonna keep up with the United States. It's just like when we did, when Eisenhower did our interstate system, you know, back in the 50s, that was a lot of money to make a nice freeway from Seattle to Spokane and from here to Helen Arrow. I don't know how it works beyond here, but uh, you know that it's just uh, I, I don't think that anybody figured people in Montana don't get good roads You know it was all for one and one for all with the infrastructure And that's what they're thinking in Europe today Consequently Eastern Germany has as good a road system as Western Germany now and it's quite exhilarating to see how Europe has invested in itself in our generation uh, to do that. Now here's a, this is a bridge in Greece over the, Corinth, uh, the Gulf of Corinth. I, for all my life, have been going to this spot and taking a funky little ferry across. And suddenly I come back one year and there's this huge bridge. What's the deal? This is not a Greek bridge. This is a German bridge, clearly. A German bridge built in Greece to get big German trucks into the Peloponnesian Peninsula with their gummy bears. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Germany pays for that bridge because they want to get at that market. And that's kind of how it works. And you see that all over the place. They're investing in their train system like we just cannot imagine. In fact, faster and faster trains. It's a dangerous place if you're a slow bird. <laughs> I was recently in the train station in Munich just for for fun, I was taking pictures of birds squished onto the windshields of trains as they rolled into the station. <laughs> and I looked at that and I thought, that's almost surreal. You'd wait all your life to see a bird squished onto the windshield of a train where I live. Yeah. <laughs> You'd wait all your life to see a train where I live. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, those trains are fast in Europe. I mean, it's really, for me, one of the great delights of traveling around Europe is just getting on those super trains and, and going. I just love it. Uh, now, you're going to see a lot of this in your travels. And, you know, I'm in the business of taking people to Europe. I, I took 12,000 people to Europe this year on 400 different tours. It's how I make my money. And uh, we're very enthusiastic about uh, encouraging people to take our tours and so on. And um, we have to deal with this sort of thing. A lot of people say, I don't want to go there. They hate us. Well, they don't hate us. A lot of people over there just don't like our militarism and they don't like our trade policy. You know, but they like us. I've never found I had to disguise who I am. And I've met a lot, most people over there don't get our trade policies. Most people in the world don't want to militarize space. Only America wants to militarize space. They just had a vote in the United Nations a few months ago. The vote was 170 to one. Shall we militarize space or not? Raise your hand if you want to, United States. Raise your hand if you don't want to. Everybody else, 171. It is routine when there's a vote in the United Nations, even in the age of Obama, when there's issues that matter to the desperately poor half of humanity. It's 150 to four. Child labor laws, landmines, water rights, debt forgiveness, 150 to four. Who stands with the United States of America? Israel, Marshall Islands, 
and Micronesia. The coalition of the bribed. I mean, the coalition of the brave. Right? Now, again, I, it doesn't matter what I think, but we just have to realize it does matter what everybody else thinks because we've got to live in this world. So I'm just bringing home the news that 96% of humanity looks at us like we're an empire. And there's never been an empire in history that didn't have angry people on the fringes shooting in from the bushes. That's just what happens when you're an empire. You, you don't line up in formation. The Redcoats did that against us and it didn't work very well. Or we did that, we, did, we learned we got to shoot in from the bushes when we were fighting a big empire. And uh, I mean, Romans had barbarians, Habsburgs had anarchists, we got terrorists. So it's just, it just goes with the territory. The United, Nation, the United States spends as much as everybody else in the world put together on our military. A lot of Americans don't realize that. We're at a crossroads in our society now. We're closing down parks. We're talking about four days a week of school instead of five days. Cutting out all sorts of regulations so we can poison our kids to make more money for our corporations. We're doing all sorts of goofy stuff because we're in crisis economically. But we're spending twice today on the military that we were 10 years ago. And we don't really have the enemies we used to have. But I mean, the rest of the world looks at this and they see a country that's drunk on militarism. We've got military bases in 150 countries. Only we can declare somebody else's resources on the other side of the planet vital to our, quote, national security interest. Well, they look at it and they think, can't you just be honest and say vital to our custom material lifestyle? You know, because that's what it is. That's exactly what it is, if we're honest. The honesty hurts. So, once again, it's just important when we travel to realize that's why we see this kind of sign. When I'm in Denmark, my friends tell me, be careful with the marijuana. We have to arrest a couple of pot smokers every year in order to maintain favored trade status with the United States of America. <laughs> I was just at a drug policy convention in Los Angeles last month. Learned a lot about this from a lot of people all over the world who are trying to deal with drug problems in a pragmatic harm reduction way. The United Nations single-handedly extorts the entire world to keep marijuana illegal because who knows why? I mean, there's lots of reasons. But there's 50,000 people dead in Mexico because marijuana, to a great extent, because marijuana is illegal. There's a lot of people that want to make a difference in the law, but the United States, this, I'm just talking about this because it's something I know about, but in many, many, many cases, it's that heavy hand of America on this planet now, of course, we saved the world from communism. We saved the world from Hitler. We've got incredible energy and ingenuity, and we've set the tone for freedom and all that kind of stuff. But there is an ugly reality that it, it's an option if we want to grapple with it. But when you travel, you're going to see that. And I just want to tell you, it's not anti-you or anti-me. It's simply anti-American trade policy and anti-American militarism. Okay? You can go anywhere and be received politely because people like Americans. You do not need to accessorize with <laughs> Canadian flags. There are more Americans wearing Canadian flags in Europe than there are Canadians wearing American, Canadian flags. 